today uh, I want to tell you about the blimp I made for my shotgun microphone. Now, audio is very important. Audio is as, as important as picture quality when it comes to making a movie. Helps tell the story properly. So I got a nice shotgun microphone. It's a Sennheiser ME67. This is a long, very, very directional shotgun microphone. And about two or three hundred dollars on eBay. Separate power module. This is a K6P. It is a phantom powered module, uh, and I can attach a number of different Sennheiser microphones to that power module. I'm probably going to also get a short, short shotgun microphone shortly. It's got a low roll off switch. I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. Yeah, you can't really see it, but there's a low roll off switch, which is supposed to help you with uh, wind noise and all that. Problem is, um, it really doesn't do much for wind. It might help with bass proximity effect. In other words, when I'm speaking right up to the microphone, it won't be as low and bassy as if it's back, you know, it won't be more low and bassy than, than back here if I use the roll, low roll-off switch. Well, it's also real susceptible to handling noise. Every little touch gets picked up. Cable handling on the end of a boom pole, even handling the boom pole gets picked up. If it, especially if it's clamped in with a you know hard rubber microphone clip. Uh, so I had to build a blimp. The blimp is uh, going to protect the microphone from wind and also handling noise. It'll physically isolate it from its uh, from its mounting. So I went looking for some different kinds of screen, um, looking for large mesh and fine mesh screens that I could mesh put together to create a cylinder, uh, and then I would need some rings to to keep its cylindrical shape, make it not squishy and and all that. The more I looked, the more I realized the amount of time I was going to put into it was going to be so out of hand um, that I might as well go spend $350 for a professional blimp and have it shipped in from Germany or whatever. Uh, and while looking for a screen at Big R, a farming supply store, I ran into these. I have no idea what it's for. I think it's some sort of a filter for something. Um, maybe it keeps grass out of a out of a a cow water or something, I don't know what it does. Um, in any case, it's got exactly what I was looking for. It's got the larger mesh here, the finer mesh inside, you know, nice fine screen. And I found some, uh, I found some other screens off some microphones. It's exactly the same size. Um, and it's just old microphones, I don't use any more kick drum microphones. And I use this uh, steel reinforced epoxy putty that you can get at any hardware store. You break it up and you, you knead it together and when it's ready uh, it starts to get warm and you've got about 30 seconds to work with it after it starts to get warm and I just put it around and smoothed it out with my finger made it nice and shiny pretty nice huh that's an end cap for my blimp I just took one of these cylinders they're you know they're this long so I just cut one in half they're you know maybe eight or ten inches long. My shotgun microphone is going to be 18 inches long so I I need at least uh, you know 20 inches or so. Uh, so I got three of these guys, uh, two for the center, one for the outside edge, or two, uh, one to be cut in half and be my end caps like this. I just took a spare piece of screen and stuck it right in the back in the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty transparent but it's screen all the way around. And I can blow. I don't feel anything going through it. No wind going through it. And it's acoustically transparent. So, this is my finished blimp. Um, let me show you some of the things that I did. One of the first things I had to be concerned with was mounting the mic clip to go on the end of my boom arm. Now, my boom is a homemade boom, and I'll show you how I made it another time. Um, with a British fishing pole. It's a very cool telescoping fiber, carbon fiber thing I got for 40 bucks online versus $300 locally or in the States. In any case, I just took some more of that steel reinforced putty and I cut apart a standard microphone clip and left the t a platform on it that st sticks out of both ends and, and on the sides made little wings in here and then I just uh, epoxied it on there. It's it's very strong and there's no flex at all in my wire mesh 
Well, that's perfect. That's exactly what I need. I can tighten this screw up as tight as I want to get my angle on my boom and all that. Now, here's my other end cap, and you'll see that I use some standard hose clamps to clamp that on. Pretty simple. Okay? You also see these weird little bow ties. Well, if you've ever done anything with elastic ties, or elastic bands, hair ties, rubber bands, anything, you know that they start to wear out after a while. They oxidize and they just break down. Uh, think briefs, you know, the whitey tighties, the elastic band wears out after a while, same deal. Uh, so what I did is I took some more of that epoxy, I made these little bow ties, and they're reinforced with a little bit of wire, just, it's just a piece of wire bent into an eye shape. And the epoxy made a, a nice little bow tie, and they hold my ties out, so that anytime I want, there's my, there's my uh, shock mount, I can change the elastic bands in my shock mount just by pulling a little tie out. The band just comes straight through. You'll see what I did was I just, I just cut some holes for the ties to go right in. That easy. See? Just like that. Now, you'll see that my, my X is in here for my shock mounts, they all go different directions. I don't want them all the same, and I want my microphone to be right in the center. So let's stick it in. Let's go all the way down, and I'm just looking in there to make sure that I'm going in the center and not sticking it through the side somewhere. I'm going to wiggle it a little bit in places, and if I, if I have to, I'll take the end cap off the front. I don't really have to, though. You can see my microphone's now floating in there. Pretty much dead center. Microphone's floating. Not touching anything. Here's the plug-in end. Okay, very nice. And there's my blimp. Okay. The whole thing, of course, with the end cap, my cable's gonna stick out here. I'm gonna I'm gonna mount a an XLR surface mount plug there, with a little cable inside that'll plug right into my microphone. I haven't done that yet, but it's, um, I haven't quite gotten lazy enough to have to do that yet. I've just run my cable out a little hole that I made in the side of the cylinder, reinforced it with some more of that epoxy, tighten my hose clamp down. What I've got is a pretty nice looking blimp. I mean, it looks Looks a little busier than if I'd gotten it from Germany, but you know I'm uh, I'm not German. I'm not that great an engineer. But this is pretty nice. It's light. My microphone's in there. Weighs nothing. Next, the dead cat. This is Dave, Case Forty Two Creative Media for Five Sprockets. See you next time.